We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and we are both in some really interesting moods today. And the moral of the story is we're basically going to shit on everything going on in Formula One right now. Yeah, I've had a long weekend. So as as we all know, I've discussed at great length, I am leaving Argentina to first world internet soon. God bless. Um, so I'm trying to travel as much as I can. I went to Patagonia this weekend in hopes that I could finally accomplish the Mount Fitz hike because I've been there four times and I haven't been able to get to the top because of weather. And with my luck, we got a foot of snow and everything was shut down and I've been living off of power bars and beef jerky. So you can imagine how happy I am right now. And I was traveling home today. So yeah, you know, great mood of Emily, but I did finally get to shower in a normal shower with hot water. So things are looking up. Yay. And then I'm just well, I'm I'm still dealing with recovering from my ordeal yesterday, which was I was supposed to take my cat Bishop to the vet yesterday, and she didn't want to go. And so I have the scars to prove just how much she did not want to go. And we're going to be trying this all over again tomorrow, but she's going to be medicated. So hopefully I won't get um covered in scratches. When in doubt, turn to drugs, as I always like to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and also um, if you are taking a cat who doesn't like leaving the house to places that she doesn't want to go and knows that she doesn't want to go there, don't try wrangling her while also wearing a tank top. <laughs> Words to live by, Catherine. Words to live by. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a, a grave miscalculation that I made, and um, I'm not going to be doing that again, even though it is hot as balls here in Arizona. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm like actually kind of getting a little chilly now not really it's only you know 55 degrees but going into winter so it's super weird I wish it was like 90 degrees and sunny but you know uh it's it's like 90 degrees and sunny out here I'm I'm kind of just counting down the days until I go back to California for the summer because I won't I won't be on a mountain, which is, which is helpful. Uh, just be, you know, love the mountain, wish it wasn't on top of a mountain. Um, and you know, where I'm going to be this summer is going to be a very different location with a lot less dirt and a lot more stable internet. So never forget summer of 2023. Yeah, and if you if you have, you know, joined us uh, later and have not watched our first ever ep- couple of episodes, the first episode that we recorded for the podcast, I we were dealing with rolling power outages, so the lights in my room just kept turning on and off throughout the entire episode. We kind of, we just we we rolled with it cuz we had to talk about uh Dan Ricardo uh replacing Nick DeVries cuz oh that was gosh. the biggest of big news at the time. Catherine, we have made it through the, I don't know, dumpster fire of internet issues. I'm surprised we don't like, I don't know, we haven't given up by now, but we're stubborn. That's why. We are. We are. Well, all right. I guess we can start talking about news of the week, or I guess the last two weeks, because we had an off week. We're in the U.S., first U.S. uh, GP. We're in Miami. Yes. Yes, we're we're in Miami. the The times of these races are are going to be very beneficial to <sighs> me specifically, and God people bless who live America. on our side of the world. Am I right? God bless America. <laughs> yeah, that's no. Honestly, something. the North America races are my favorite, um, partially because of the time zone. Actually, no, just because of the time zone. All the Europe races right now for me are not bad because I think I'm only like four or five hours off from them, um, but. God, is it hard to watch those Asia races. Holy oh, yeah. shit. But anyways, yeah. I mean, I it's late nights for you, but it's the middle of the night for, for, for you. 
Um, and I'm also going to digress really quickly and just say, speaking of, you know, land of the free home of the uh, people who like to get involved in things that they don't need to get involved in. Um, a lot of the news that we're talking about is news that came out today because like everything happened today. It's Wednesday. Yeah. Um, one of the little pieces of news that I didn't put in the rundown is um, the United States Congress has decided it wants to get involved with F F1 denying Andretti an entrance and like antitrust laws. And I'm like, does Congress understand that F1 and the FIA are governed by french law do you see the letter that they sent i skimmed it? it and i was yeah. i was like i was like can you like maybe I mean, focus on something else i understand and i get it but at the same time it's like oh yeah no i mean are they wrong no, no. um it, is congress going to be able to do anything also no and with the the continued you know movement that Andretti is making their entrance into F1 is inevitable it just Congress has a lot of more important things that it should be dealing with right now and it's not motorsports what are you talking full about offense. <laughs> full offense um, Catherine Catherine back I'm off red flagging you we're not going to turn this into a political podcast oh we're not even going no no but, we're definitely not going there but uh yeah when I saw that I was like oh my gosh here we go like whatever but anyways very small compared to some of the other items that have come out today speaking of which the inevitable has actually happened adrian newey is leaving red bull this was speculated a little bit earlier in the season it is true um there's been so much going on at red bull honestly we all know I am not the Red Bull fan of the podcast. It's Catherine, but I'm really sick and tired of hearing about Red Bull more so than normal. Um, yep. Great. He's leaving early 2025. Like, that is the worst time to leave based on regulations and car development. So he can't really do anything for any other team if he even goes to a team until 2026, 2027. So honestly, I just, like, I don't have the capacity to care. And as the Red Bull fan of this podcast, I also do not have the capacity to care. I, and maybe this is because I'm a newer Formula One fan, newer Red Bull fan, and haven't, you know, been through all the iterations of the 19 years that Adrian Newey has spent with this team. Um, But I have just been so completely and totally burnt out on off-track Red Bull news that I don't care if there's a civil war going on between the Horner camp and the Newey camp and whatever's going on over there. Um... I, 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 I don't care. Um, and you know, he, so he, and like, like we said, he's going to be leaving. I think that he will be done with his duties with the Red Bull Formula One team at the end of the 2024 season, yeah. but he's staying on with Red Bull as an organization until sometime in Q1 of 25 to finish Red Bull's hypercar project, which he is allegedly very committed to seeing through to its completion. Um, and he will be able to um, join a new team right after there won't be any garden leave, which is what a lot of people suspected. Um, but he will be able to join a team immediately after leaving this project they've already rolled out aston martin so obviously the idea is um ferrari or mercedes i think he should go to williams but that's just me um but, i would yeah. love for him to go to williams and work with jv oh my right god love yeah but at, at, at the same time like you said this is really not going to have an impact until 2026 and so i don't care right now I, we 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 think so much about the future in the driver market. Obviously, our driver market episode. That I just want to focus. Like this is the worst weekend to be like. I just want to focus on the racing because it's Miami. But it's like I just want to focus on what's happening on the track. Honestly, same. Like I would rather watch a sprint race than sit yeah. and talk about Red Bull off track news. So that should tell everybody where I'm at. Okay, something else that happened this week as well. Um, oh, really today. Came out today. Yeah, Ugh, you know me in time. Um, nice. Gunther Steiner is, do- is suing Haas because they are still hey. selling merch with his likeness on their website and he did not authorize it and he wants his, he wants his money. Yeah, um, he's, he's taking the team to court in the United States, claiming that Haas has not paid him commissions owed for, you know, things like merch for several years um, and has, you know, has been and is continuing to use him in promotional material on their website, which let's be real, 
he was Haas's promotional material for yeah. basically the entirety of the existence of the team until now. Um, and for me, and just, you know, how entrenched I am in the college sports world, it's giving NIL vibes. It's screaming NIL, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, he's left, like, he is Haas. He started the team. Yeah. He was Haas. And so, like, I understand why, because he's, such a big character, such a big figure. Everyone loves him, um, especially after Drive to Survive. So I totally understand why they're doing it, but they can't just do that and not give him any money. Well, yeah, and especially if this is something that's owed over over years, obviously we know that Haas doesn't have, you know, a lot of money. Um, but, you know, this is, you know, he, he, built, he built this team um, and, you know, as much as we all love Gunther, um, Haas needs to stop, you know, selling stuff with his face on it. Yeah. And it's all probably, it's all probably like back catalog stuff, which, you know, to be fair, you know, you want to unload your back catalog, but if you're going to unload your back catalog, you also have to pay the guy whose face is plastered on your stuff. Agreed. Agreed. Yep. All right. So now... I'd like to get into the WTF Ferrari segment of this podcast. Um, yeah. I, you know, it's getting harder and harder every day to be the Ferrari fan on this podcast. I'm, I'm just so gonna, sorry for you. I'm just going to say it. So Ferrari came out with a new title sponsor, which is HP, HP Printers. So now they're going to be known as Scuderia Ferrari HP, which sounds so mm. dumb. When I thought we couldn't get worse than V carb for our right? so hold my beer. I will do this. Um, so yeah, now there's Scuderia Ferrari HP, SFHP, if you will. Sounds like a freaking sunscreen. Jesus. Right. Christ. But the um, worst part. Yeah. What's the, just hit me with it, Catherine. There's literally like 800 HP logos plastered all over this car and it's kind of ridiculous. And and this isn't even going into the part where we talk and we are going to talk plenty about the Ferrari goes blue livery. Um, but it's like, we understand that HP is, is the title sponsor and that they should have, you know, prime real estate, but do they need to have prime real estate on the front wing, the rear wing, the suspension, the wheels, the, the back of the car, the diffuser, the front of the car, uh, the, the body of the car, the everything of the car, like they, they, do, they, you don't need that many HP logos. For those of you not watching on YouTube, I'm aggressively shaking my head. It is so ridiculous. <laughs> I've talked about this. A million and one times until I'm actually blue, Ferrari. A million people have to sign off on this. This goes through so yeah. many different level layers of approval. How does this shit happen? I don't understand. I honestly think someone just went rogue and was like, oh, here, let's do this. Or like this was their first draft and no one thought to double check. And it was approved and sent, and this is what's happening. And they were too, they were in too deep and they couldn't change it. It is god awful. God awful. I hate it. I yeah. Can't. Which brings us to the Ferrari goes blue. So when I heard that yes. Ferrari was going blue and they were like teasing this, I'm like, oh, we are going to smurf out. We are going full blue. What a change up. This is going to be so awesome. Like, HP's the new sponsor. Throw the blue in there. Go blue car great you know sponsorship placement and they did the absolute minimum with the absolute worst again who is approving this shit it is so bad there's like two different color blues that don't even me mesh well together the wing completely doesn't tie into the rest of the car it is so bad it's embarrassing and painful and cringeworthy when i saw it i just wanted to oh it's so bad it's so bad yeah. I so I'm going to provide a little bit of context while also saying, thanks, I hate it. Um, and it just, it looks like they, they should have gone all in. Like, wh why were they cowards? Give us the, Smurf give out. us the blue Ferrari. I wanted a um, full blue Ferrari. Yeah. So this, 
blueness that we're seeing is because this is the 70th anniversary of Ferrari's presence in the North America. Uh, whatever. Um, they st- So I, I did a little of, of, of uh, Google sleuthing on this, and apparently they started the last two races of the 1964 season with this U.S.-inspired blue and white livery um, to end the season. There was also some drama between Enzo Ferrari and the FIA and Italy's national sport body, where basically Enzo got so pissed and said that Ferrari would never represent it to Italy's colors again, um, which clearly did not last um but you have two shades there's the light blue shade which is um to recognize argentina's national racing colors um specifically worn by alberto ascari former you know world champion um and then the dark blue which was worn by um as a bunch of different um race suits by a bunch of uh, different um ferrari drivers including nikki lauda um so that's why you have two different colors of red blue on this car but it's still a red ferrari with a bunch of stupid little splotches honestly it looks like the, they were just painting the car and they're like oh we ran out of red paint oh well we have some of this blue and some of this blue let's just slap it on and make it work like it's so bad i understand the sentiment much <laughs> like the three different cars one livery you know tribute last year that mclaren did understand right. the sentiment it's fallen short. Don't love it. Do a full blue one. Do the dark blue with light blue highlights where the yellow is on the current car. Like, how freaking cool would that look for an all blue Ferrari? But no. Yeah, I mean, we've seen plenty of of renders of what this car could and should have been um, that would have been really cool all over social media. If you open up Instagram, there's going to be the what you wanted versus what you got meme. Um, but the other issue that I took with this is they took they're sweet they took like a week of teasing this stupid car and that's all we got i know they were teasing it and i was like oh yeah this is gonna be good and yeah it was it's like when people drop news like oh something's coming in six months it's like cool like that sucks it's such a letdown and they teased it for so long and they gave us absolutely nothing it's just so disappointing and to go on top of the disappointment they released the helmets for Carlos and Charles. I swear someone at Ferrari is the fun police and will not let them do any cool helmets because it's their exact red helmet just in freaking blue. It's so dumb. Yeah. Like, let them do something fun. Which, to be <sighs> fair, they've had fun helmets in the past. Obviously, Charles's Miami helmet, I don't think it was last season, but the season before was the, was the football, football turf helmet. Yeah. So cool. Um, but yeah, so Charles's helmet is light blue for Ascari. Carlos's, the, the dark blue for for the, the race suits. It, you know, I get it. It's in theme. It's boring as hell. Um, and also, everybody is comparing the, um, the car re-release to what Alpine did when Alpine was teasing theirs before we were really disappointed by Alpine. Um, and And so that was, so it's giving the Alpine camo incident, but yeah, it's there. I'm not impressed by, by anything that they've really come out with. I think that the coveralls that the, that Charles and Carlos are going to be wearing, make them look like gas station mechanics um, and really not in a good way. No, I would say only the one picture with Charles and like the, uh the button up the short sleeve button up oh yeah that was real bad he looks like he works at the shell gas station around the corner it is so bad and now he's like (laughs) growing out weird facial hair and it's super creepy and it's like yeah you belong at the shell around the corner smoking a cigarette like maybe put you in a dad bod and that is what you are and it's so bad i don't hate the race suits though at least they went all out. At least it's not a red race suit with like a stripe of blue. I appreciate the commitment to the blue there. I do. So those yeah, which they've the they've done that plenty in in right. the the race suits, like the yellow race suits. Great. They or, look I mean, like the, they the were at McDonald's. Were fine. <laughs> yeah, they committed. Yeah. They went. For I it. just everything about this has just been such a disappointment like just and it it feels like everything is um I'm gonna go a little bit off track here for a second but one of my favorite television shows is the show called Fringe and Fringe um is a sci-fi show that came out in 2008 that spoiler alert deals with alternate universes and at one point you have the red verse and you have the blue verse and the red verse is basically 
the blue logos with like a red paint overlay. And I really feel like that's what they did with like, they just did a blue paint overlay over everything red and like a blue filter overlay over everything red in their social media graphics. And I'm just sitting here like, why does this just look so half-assed? It's so bad. I'm so disappointed. So disappointed. (sighs) All right, I think we can end our WTF Ferrari moment. I'm yeah. sure we'll get so, back to it, but... Yeah, so we've got other helmets that we, we will do. be seeing this weekend. Um, Oscars is very Miami Vice. Don't hate it. It's fine. Um, Max Verstappen announced that he will be using the same, you know, whitish, bluish, um, Americanish helmet for all the three U.S. races. It's you know, it's Max, very America. It's very, it's America. very America, but it's also very Max Verstappen. Like yeah. he has the the type of helmet that he likes to wear, and he really doesn't deviate from it often, other than adding World Championship stars. Um, but I do think that so far the helmet of the weekend has to go to Sergio Perez and the crocodile or the the gator crocodile. What am I thinking? The alligator helmet. Um, yeah, no, I think it's cool. I think there's way too much Red Bull on it. He should have gone all out. It looks a little right. like mm, iffy, but it is, I give him a for creativity for sure. I give him a for being the best of a bunch of really like other not so great helmets. Obviously it's Wednesday. We have, we can continue to hold out on hope that Lando Norris is going to give us an amazing Miami helmet because his other Miami helmets have been next level. We had the basketball last year and the beach ball the year before. Um, so crossing fingers and toes, we will get an awesome helmet out of Lando. Um, but right now, Perez's helmet might just be the winner of the weekend. Yeah. Also, changing it up this weekend in Miami, um, JVRB or VCARB or Visa Cash App Red Racing Bull Red Bull, whatever the frick they're going by, um, they did a really cool. I like their announcement. So yeah. on social media, you can see it. They did an announcement with Danny Rick and, and Yuki, and they like send the car through a car wash, and like once it leaves the, oh, my lights are flickering. Who knows? We might lose power. Um, (laughs) What a fun episode. Um, But it, like, goes through a car wash. At the beginning, there's a bunch of soap on it. When it comes through, you actually see it. And it's, like, this cool swirl of, like, honestly, when I saw it, I thought of um, Baskin Robbins. uh, Yeah. uh, Rainbow Sherbert ice cream. Yeah. Um, I like it. I wish they would have done it for the whole car and not left so much, like, Visa Blue on it. But I do like it. I think it's kind of fun. It's very, like hey, we have a new car, here it is, it's Miami-themed, we actually went for it. So I like it. After being so utterly disappointed by everything Ferrari, I it, it's like, it's meeting that bare minimum. It, it, it is a nice car. It is it is definitely a car. You're going to know that it's the V-car but when it's on track, even when it's driving at 150 miles an hour. Um, and yeah, I, I'm. I'm also glad that they announced it right. You know, with with time for us to fit it into the rundown because literally they announced it about 20 minutes ago as of recording. Yeah. So, but that's it for now for changes, the change ups for appearance. Let's say in Miami, but again, it is only Wednesday, so I'm sure we'll see more and we can recap those in the recap episode. Um, but another yeah. thing that kind of came out, they have delayed the decision for changing up championship points so we talked a little bit about that for china um if they would go all the way to 12 to to get points and change that structure but that decision has been delayed until july so we won't hear anything until july but when we do obviously we'll talk about it we'll have a thousand and one opinions on it as well so yeah i mean it's Tiny little blip, same with the other little blip of, you know, Lando Norris was in the Netherlands celebrating King's Day and almost broke his nose, which apparently, according to reports, he's fine. He has a tiny little bandage. Um, but yeah, it the, uh, th- those were kind of the, the, the small bits that we can, you know, round out the, the news roundup that will probably be a significant portion of this episode. Um, but before we dive into Miami, the cringiest race of the year, um, and I do think that Miami is cringier than Vegas, let's be real. Um, I don't Academy know. Academy is back. 
Yes, it is back. But b- before we move on, I don't think anyone can get over the Hunger Games aspect of Vegas. <laughs> so Vegas might win out, but Miami, if they bring back LL Cool J, oh my <laughs> god, yeah, I will die. But anyways, sorry. I honestly, I honestly think that the drivers got used to the Vegas bullshit more, and that the Miami stuff was just like why are we here and you're right like the LL Cool J production and it's like okay it's Vegas like this is weird but we're doing it Miami is just like oh awkward and why are we here exactly exactly it's like it's just Florida um and if you're from Florida and you love Florida sorry for the Florida slander but uh last time I was in Florida I got food poisoning and my team's lost and I don't have great memories of the state of Florida so super off track but obviously Taylor Swift dropped her new double album and there's a song called oh yes and she's supposed to be at the Miami Grand Prix but she will be supporting Alpine because Travis Kelsey is a part owner oh my god you're right ah it's just ooh. Yuck. I hope that she does visit the Aston Martin garage so that everybody can take a picture of her next to the Aston Martin. We can get the the lyrics again. Honestly, just, she did name drop Aston Martin. It's times like this, though, where I'm glad that there's not a U.S. feed of F1. Because do you know how many times we would hear the song Florida and how much we would just see her on the screen? Oh, yeah. Like, no offense to her obviously it's the nfl and espn and you know they're doing but during the football season but i can't imagine oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. how much but i want martin brundle to do a grid walk and i want him to interview her because i just think it would be so inter- interesting to see but anyways going back on track um, oh yeah no that i think i think her and and if he can also it, if if travis and oh, taylor yeah. are on the grid at the same time that would probably be the highlight of the grid walk and hopefully we won't have a you know serena williams rihanna incident with yeah, security no. guards like this this is and we've talked about this before um that like if you're on the grid and you're on the grid during the grid walk you have to be ready for martin brundle to ask you a quick question like yes. i don't care how famous or not famous you are you have to be ready for it and you have you have to understand that this is like this is a part of formula one yeah but anyways my worlds are colliding so yes I just had to that is that true up. But going back to something very important happening this weekend, it is the second race of the F1 Academy in Miami. Yes, very exciting. They're back on. We haven't seen them for a few weeks. Um, They did actually do some testing out at Zanvoort um, last week, um, you know, getting them, you know, back on, you know, in the cars, getting them, you know, ready for this weekend, which I think is a really smart idea. Um, They have announced a couple new sponsors. American Express will be joining the grid. Jess Edgar, who was originally joining, uh, driving the F1 Academy livery, she will now be um, driving the American Express livery, which looks just like an American Express card and it's really cool and I, I really like that they're going all out with these liveries very nice A I know it's like come on guys take a page out of F1 Academy's book for these liveries my god I love the addition of American Express as a sponsor I think it's really really great they have a huge global reach I think our girl Susie is just killing it with this they're really going all out and I love it love 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 yeah it. I'm so here for it. Um, and then other big news, this, this came out a couple of weeks ago, but Dorian Pawn, who is kind of like the, the presumptive F1 Academy champion, um, she is going to be joining last year's champion, Marta Garcia, um, and will be joining her um, alongside her duties in F1 Academy while also racing in Formula Regional Europe, um, which is when... Um, the the winners uh, the winner and vice champion of F1 Academy have been you know allocated seats in Formula Regional Europe so Marta Garcia is going to be there Marta and Pon will be um, on the Iron Dames Racing Team which is a subset of a, a team that's focused on you know female drivers and then Lena Bowler who is the vice champion from last season will also be in the field um, the season actually starts on the 11th um, so Pon is going to be busy over the next few months um doing you know pretty much doing double duty yes yes that's exciting to see and then they also announced the wild card so if you remember from our saudi arabia yeah yeah (laughs) time 
Saudi Arabia episode, um, we kind of explained how each race will have a local wild card. So there was a driver, a female driver from Saudi Arabia who got a wild card seat. And now and had a pretty decent weekend. She did. She did have a pretty good weekend. And now that we're in Miami, it'll be a local driver. So there is an American. So it's Courtney Crone. Um, and she currently drives in the Lamborghini Super Trophy series. I think it's Trofeo. Trofeo. I can never announce, pronounce anything. Um, which I should be better because my last name is impossible to pronounce. And I hate when people say it wrong. And so I should do better, <laughs> but I don't. Um, but yeah, so she is the uh, wild card for Miami, and she was also at uh, testing in Zanvor, and she'll be driving a QVC livery, which again I love. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what this car is going to look like. Um, I think it's it's like QVC is such a brand that you do not associate with motorsport, but is really big with like you know women in the United States. Um, I will admit I'm a little surprised that we're seeing a wild card in an American race because um, we already have two American drivers. We have Leah Block and we have Chloe Chambers. Um, Leah Block is the Williams driver and Chloe Chambers is the Haas driver. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head which team they actually drive for, but those are the liveries they, they drive under. I don't hate this. Um, cause I do think that, you know, shining a light on, you know, continuing to shine a light on, on women's motorsport is always great. Um, but I am a little bit surprised to, to see a wild card here. I'm not, cause I think they're doing a wild card at every race. I think they said select races. Um, oh, I thought I, it was every I, single one. And I was going to say like, if it's at every single one, but they're like, oh, we have two American drivers. So we're not taking a wild card. I think that'd be a little weird. Um, right. have, but if it is select races, then. But I I'm pretty like sure it's it would be not select. going to be every race, but I'm cool with it being every race. But if it's also select races, like maybe there's not a female driver at the caliber to jump into an F1 Academy car. So that's maybe why they like can't force it because, you know, whatever, for whatever reason. So maybe that's why. But maybe that I mean, the U.S. heavily invests into sport. And so I feel like the U.S. might have more to pick from than other countries. Yeah. I mean, probably. Um, and I also, because, you know, the, the Lamborghini series that Chrome drives in is completely different from open wheel motorsports. Right. So fortunately she was in Zandvoort for the tests. Um, so that, you know, it, this, this won't be her first experience in the car won't be, you know, free practice. Also all of the formula one Academy um, practices, qualifyings and races will be available um, on F1 TV, but also on the F1 Academy YouTube channel. And I think also on their Twitter feed. Um, so there's every opportunity, opportunity to be able to tune in this weekend. Um, oh, and side note, um, Formula One has also released a free broadcast channel in the United States that has um, all these different, you know, practices, recordings, you know, features, everything's going to be tape delayed and not going to be live. It's basically just like a, a preview for um, F1 TV, which if you're interested in Formula One in the United States and you can afford an F1 TV subscription, could not recommend it more. Yeah. Oh, all right. Should we talk about Miami? Yeah, my Miami is is here and, and it's happening and it's in its third season. Max is the only winner this race has ever known. Um, last year's race was no, most notable because Fernando was watching the race while oh driving in it and hyping Lance up on the oh screens. My God. I will never forget that was the. He's like, oh. Lance had a really nice, you know, overtake. Oh, tell nice, good, or Lance, good move. Like, I was like, how right? are you watching a screen and driving a million miles per hour? Right. Yeah. It's wild. And something as I'm, we know, yeah, go ahead. Oh, something I'm also, like, kind of off track moment, but something I'm really looking forward to is to see who shows up to Miami. I, I mean, Miami yes. is so, like, glitzy, glamoury. I know Vegas is big for that, but I know a lot of people turn out for Miami, so I'm also really excited to see what people wear because Miami also just like brings the fashion so I'm really excited for that as well to see that on the grid walk and also the drivers throughout the week showing up to the um to the track so yay fashion yeah and can I can I say that comparing fashion from from this season last season I feel like the drivers are not as 
into it. Stepping it up. I, I, I feel like we're seeing a lot more drivers showing up to the track in team gear rather than, you know, the wild and at fashions that we've been expecting out of specifically the likes of Lewis Hamilton and Joe Guan Yu. Um, I, I really feel like they're, for whatever reason, they've just been sticking to their team gear. And I'm kind of just like, but fashion, please. I know. I'm really missing like the full Louis Vuitton moments from Lewis Hamilton. Like just. Right. But it's, it's very interesting that we're not and seeing I think, that. I want to say Joe did like a really cool Prada moment last year. I don't yes. know if it was. I think it was Prada. It was super, super cool. Um, but yeah, no, I completely agree. I've been extremely let down and disappointed. And maybe Miami is where they bring it. Hopefully hope so I feel like we've been saying that week to week in our DMs but I know and I feel like we also just looking back at the last two years I feel like the week leading up to Miami we've seen so much um like football content from the drivers of them going through like um obstacle courses like yeah yeah and And I haven't seen any of that yet I mean it is early it's only Wednesday but I still feel like we're missing some of that which that's the stuff I like. I don't like the cringy like LL Cool J announcement. That's not what I like. But it's always fun to like see these drivers do American football things. Yeah, I mean, the, I I just saw today Red Bull has um had the the drivers doing some pro, um pro baseball stuff, which is interesting because oh. you know baseball is currently in season and the NFL is not. Um, but yeah, so so they were they were at, um. I, there was a video of um, Sergio Perez learning how to throw a baseball. Um, so you know, it's something something he just to do. Screams un- uncoordinated. I don't know why, but he does. And I know he's an F one driver. Yeah. Like, don't give me shit for that. But like, he just screams like, "I cannot throw this baseball and hit a target." You know, right? Yeah. I, so I like I when I was I was watching the clip and he he threw the ball and it and they they were the camera was focused on like Max waiting to catch it and I was like, is Max gonna catch this thing? And he did. And I was surprised that the ball I'm not the surprised that the ball reached him because they weren't very far apart. Um, but I was a little bit surprised that like you know, oh my god, men can play catch. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it's gonna be interesting to see what other content we see come out of Miami. Um, yeah. But this brings us to our predictions. So, yeah. And I feel like we completely yeah, skipped yeah, over did. this. Um, it's a sprint weekend. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, you're right. It is a sprint weekend. <laughs> I forgot to put that in the rundown, but it's a sprint weekend. Yay. It's a sprint weekend. Woo. I keep forgetting because we all know on this podcast we do not, you know, support sprint weekends. Um, so, I've just been like putting it out of my mind, but it is a sprint weekend. So, we have a ton of predictions to get through. So, let's try. To get through these quickly because there's yeah, no and I will say to to emphasize after our discussion in um in the China in our in our China reaction, the sprint was only exciting because it rained. And I know that yes. there's the camp of would you rather have a sprint qualifying or would you rather sit and watch FP two. The problem is is that the sprint still doesn't actually benefit the sport as a whole and until that time and until you can have a sprint weekend that's actually good for all of the racing because at this point we have good sprint bad race or bad race or or good race bad sprint um like and stefano dominicali can't guarantee like he can't order up a rainstorm in every sq3 that we're gonna have this season um you know he's he's very powerful but not powerful enough to control the weather so i i i'm still on the fence about the the sprint and the sprint format and it it still needs improvements even though yes the sprint qualifying was very exciting yeah, I th- I mean, I think weather this weekend is supposed to be good in Miami, so I don't think it's going to be really that exciting. Um, I mean, there's always a twenty percent chance of rain. This is Florida, yeah. Um, but That's the, fair. I I, fair. I just checked the weather, and the only period that there's that there's ha- supposed to be storms are today, Wednesday, and tomorrow, Thursday. So yeah. today, as you were listening to this, if you're listening as we post, yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. I jury's out. I I last year I hated all of them except for Brazil, but again, Brazil had weather and it's a really short, fast track, so it was actually kind of exciting. But anyways, we could talk until we're 
Ferrari blue in the face about how much we hate. <laughs> how much we hate. See what I did there? How much we hate yep. sprints. Um, but let's get into our prediction. So sprint poll, Catherine. So, oh, again, to back up. Catherine and I this season are not sharing our predictions with each other until it's live on recording, just for shock value, if you will. And we're also awarding ourselves points to make it more serious and so we don't end up with the Alex Albon on the podium situation like I had last year. Um, Everyone picked him, though, so you were right to do that. Yeah, well, it is what it is. So we're taking it more seriously this year. So And we pick for sprints as well. So with that being said, who do you have getting the sprint poll, Catherine? Um, I picked Max. I, I just... You know, if, if there's not going to be weather, I don't <laughs> think we're, you know, we're going to see a different pole sitter. Um, so, or, you know, unless he like has car issues, but I don't think we're going to see that knock on prefab wood. That is my desk. Um, so yeah, I, I picked Max. My, I, I feel like my predictions this week are very boring. Oh, same. I picked Max as well. Cause he's Max and we don't have weather. So yeah. Um, sprint podium. I did go a little rogue. I wouldn't say super rogue, but I will say a little rogue. Um, okay. I have Max Lando Carlos. Oh. Yeah. I was feeling a little spicy. I don't know. I just. Yeah. We're we're going for it. Who knows? No. I, reason. I was thinking about it. I just it. like it. I I was thinking about it, but then I also remember that you said going to China that. Carlos struggles on sprint weekends and Carlos struggled on last sprint weekend. Uh, so I, I did not pick him for the sprint. I went Max Checo Fernando. Cause I think Fernando needs a little bit of a bounce back after the nonsense of last week. And I think, or last race. And I just, I, th- I think that he, he can, he can get back onto a podium. I like it. I like it. And then for the sprint race, we pick P8 because P8 is the last position where you earn a point. You get one point for P8. So who do you have as your sprint P8? I've got George. Oh, that's fair. I have his teammate. I have Lewis. Oh. <laughs> I thought go. about that. There you go. Those Mercedes boys and their sneaky points. I tell you. Right. It's just. You don't get a lot of sneaky points for P8 in the sprint. You just get the one. I, I don't like the hey, sprint. Hey, Catherine, it's a point. It's a point. It is a point. That is um, true. Okay. And then moving into Sunday's race for pole, again, I have Max Verstappen because he is Max. Same. Okay. Yeah. And then for the race podium, again, friendly reminder to those of you listening, um, if we don't predict the podium – perfectly we get nothing so that's fun um which I've only been able to do once (laughs) and I'm struggling um so for my race podium I have Max Checo Carlos (laughs) so do I god damn it Catherine (laughs) but it's funny like that we do this live and we still half the time pick the same shit because last season right we had the same shit and I was like oh Am I subconsciously looking at Catherine's or is she subconsciously looking at mine? But no, we just, we think identically. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I, like I said, I just, I, I, I looked at last year's results. I, I considered, you know, the, the state of the cars this, you know, this season and finally just decided on settling on this. Yeah, no, and. It's so hard to pick these because you never know what's going to happen. Someone could have an right. engine catch fire. And yeah, so. Yeah. Okay. Going into P10. So in the race, P10 is the last po- place where you earn a point. You get one point for P10. Catherine, who is your P10 for the for the Grand Prix? I'm going with Yuki. Ooh, I like that. I He's really been wavering right around that point. And I did have right. him for a second. But... I'm going for it. I'm saying Sergeant. It makes okay. zero sense. And he will probably finish in 20th place. But that's okay. It's his home race. And this kind of brings me into my surprise moment of the weekend is that Sergeant gets points in his home race. Actually, not by default. So 
I know uh, this is the thing. We think Logan Sargent gets three home races because he has Vegas, Coda, and Miami. And he got a point by default last year in a technical home race, uh, which was Coda. But he's actually right. from Florida. So I consider Miami truly to be his home race. But yeah, that's my surprise of the weekend that Sargent gets a point in his home race. And he's also my P10. Yeah, no, I. It's not that I forgot that this was Logan's home race, but yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, so it's it's Logan's home race. It's also Haas's home race, technically, because we are racing in the United States and they are the American team, America. Um, but yeah, so my biggest surprise of the weekend is that this entire this weekend won't be an absolute cringy downer. I think that's asking too much, honestly. I, I mean, like it you. very well could be, but that like. I will be shocked if like they dial down the cringe and we have good racing in both the sprint and the, the race race. Um, that will, that would surprise me greatly. Okay. Yeah. So going off of that point, I have, who's going to do a dumb or like an oops. And I have just the Miami Grand Prix <laughs> and making everything super cringe. Like, honestly, it's written right here. I will show you. Um, <laughs> But I also have that Alpine's upgrades are not going to be helpful and they're still just not going to do well. I don't see them making it out of Q, um, Q1. Okay. Yeah. My, my dumb is, and I haven't done this in a while, but my dumb is Ferrari. Um, Cause Ferrari and, and, and let's be real. This is, Ferrari this has is our already, shit on Ferrari episode. <laughs> well, it, it is, but Ferrari has already done the dumb with this entire um, blue Ferrari adventure. But I also do think that we're going to be seeing the continuance of what we saw in China between Carlos and Charles of them fighting each other more than yeah. fighting everyone else. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think that we are at risk of continuing to see that because I feel like, you know, they the, the two of them fought during the sprint and, you know, Fred said everything's fine. And then the race happened and everything was not fine. Um, and they also had them on a one stop strategy that nobody else was on. Um, so so I think that um, I think that Ferrari is is going to continue on this streak of of dumb stuff, and it's so disappointing, honestly. Like yeah. it's ugh, it's so frustrating. But what do they expect when they you know treat Carlos the way they treat him, and he's driving the way that he's driving? Charles is going to get upset. Carlos is going to want to drive for a really really good seat. So it's just like it's just not good. It's going to be a horrible season for Ferrari. I just, it, it just is. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not looking, not looking good for, yeah. for, for them. I, I, I really, their, their performance last week did not inspire a lot of confidence. No. On the first few races, I was like, okay, not bad. And then we hit China and I'm just like, nope, it's going to go downhill from here. I have no confidence. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not looking not looking great no but final thoughts for Miami I'm I am excited one to have better racing times two to see what they do it's honestly I'm ready for the shock value of how cringy it's going to be and that's entertaining as a fan to see how bad it is um last year I I actually visibly was cringing watching LL Cool J um so can't wait for that and also I am excited to see truly the first sprint race of the season because I don't count China because of weather um to see how it plays out so we can comment more about how we probably hate it but you know just all around ready to get back racing it feels like it's been forever since we've had a race so yeah it's it's you know this is the beginning of a a little bit of a you know stint of of um we're gonna have a, a a double header up next but yeah i'm i'm excited to get back racing another one of those periods of there is so much news i just want to see cars go really fast yeah. type of things right now which is how i felt at the very beginning of the season when all of the the news was breaking left right and center um Thank you, Lewis. Ham- like this is this is all. Let's be real. This is all Lewis Hamilton's fault. Because if he hadn't Hamilton, announced on February first, vendetta, your vendetta is insane. You can't blame all of this on Lewis. Watch me. <laughs> I am known for the grudges I hold. I know. You I won't go into them, but 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 we know this. Um, but but yeah, I just I I hope this is a good racing weekend. I I hope that we can. Um, you know, 
have good racing. Obviously, you know, this is going to be Williams's first race where they're going to have a backup chassis. Um, so that's exciting for them. Um, and yeah, let's, let's get these boys in the cars. And, Honestly, and now that they have the fast. backup chassis, <laughs> they're just going to be crashing them. left and right. Yeah. They're both going to crash and they're only going to have one backup. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> and Logan's going to be screwed at his home race. Oh my God. I think we've just cursed it. We put it in the universe. I'm sorry, JV. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. Sorry, JV. Sorry, Logan. Oh, okay. Well, before we curse any other teams and, and strike them with bad luck with our podcast with Voodoo Dolls, um, Catherine, what's your F1 fun fact for our podcast today for the episode? Yeah. So the F1 fun fact um, is going to be for Ayrton Senna, who obviously uh, today... May 1st is the anniversary of his passing. Um, But, you know, he's obviously one of the biggest names that the sport has. Um, And this fun fact is his worst placement that he's won a a race from was P5 at the United States Grand Prix in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona in 1990. Oh, my goodness. Aging. Yeah. And I was looking at the track. Um, which also um, the you, that 1990 year I was born, um, but the track was basically like around where Chase Field is, where the Diamondbacks play, Ooh. and just knowing those streets and thinking about that being an F1 street track, I'm just like, and obviously, you know, we don't have the United States Grand Prix in Phoenix anymore for a reason. It's because nobody enjoyed it. Like there was a Jack in the Box like corner um because literally there was a turn that was right in front of a jack-in-the-box but it just would have been like like near the president's right like the president streets yes oh my god that's okay well first of all that's a sketchy area and also it's like right stream like desert suburbia area oh my god i can't imagine but yeah i know i know the -the jack-in-the-box you're talking about it's probably still the same one Oh Probably. God. Yeah, that 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 That's Grand Prix did not last very long. Um, it lasted long enough to have two separate um, track configurations, but both of them were in that same area and both were just kind of weird. And also other minor fun fact is, according to my sister, who's very into our family genealogy, we have a like distant cousin who is named for Ayrton Senna. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Like fun fact. Story. Fun yeah. fact. All right, well, up next we have our Miami Grand Prix recap, which will be out on Monday. I'm excited. We're going to have a lot to recap. I can already oh yeah, already tell. Well, thanks for listening to our Miami predictions. That has been our episode. Thanks for going off track with us, guys. <laughs>